This conference will now be recorded. Who's all right? Oh, my God. I don't see you. He's crazy. Excuse me. Mike. Mike. Robert, I'm here. <laughs> Welcome to the Blaine County Board of Commissioner meeting, Monday, October the 4th. Um, Reverend Jason Lee from Dublin First Baptist will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I mean, the invocation and uh, DCI, DCI, Talia. Talia Freeman will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. But before we do that, will you please stand and remove your headgear and let's do a moment of silence for Donna Cagle and her family. Almighty Father, we thank you for the life of Donna Cagle and her service to our community. And Father, we come to you tonight, and along with King David, we declare that yours, Lord, is a great and some power, and glory, victory, and majesty, and all, all that's in heaven and earth is yours, and yours alone is the kingdom. I thank you for your public servants that are here tonight, and I pray that you would give them wisdom. It says in your word in the book of James, that if any man asks for wisdom, you will give it to them liberally as long as they ask in faith. That's what we do here tonight. Give them wisdom and discernment. I pray that they would lead us in a way that glorifies you and is in submission to your word, not just in what they do here tonight, but in how they live. We ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Jackson. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic which stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I beg you, start to come here, man. Yeah, I'm going to reward you. <laughs> so there's a token of Wayne County and says, In God we trust. And there's a little coin token in, from Blaine County that says thank you on the back. Thank you. Thank you, thank you ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. So, Dr. Othiel and Goins and Mr. Mike Coddell are summoned in and the rest of the commission for present. Uh, entertain a motion to approve the consent item. So moved. Mr. Pat Cameron, Gil Sager, Mr. Danny. Uh, any discussion? All in favor say aye. Oh, 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 oh. Mr. Peterson? Yes. Mr. Gillespie? Yes. Mr. Britt? Yes. Mr. Cogdale? Yes. Dr. Ellis? Yes. Mr. McGill? Yes. Dr. Mungowan? Yes. 
Mr. Bullock? Yes. Mr. Hester? Yes. Yeah. Okay, this time we're going to do um, four H week proclamation presentation. Please, if y'all come up, four H, if y'all would come up. I'll be up for a while. Hey. There you go, Miss Marie. Let me know when I'm ready. Okay, we're ready. Whereas 4-H youth across the nation are leading efforts to solve problems in their communities and make a difference for their future. <clears throat> and whereas 4-H is the largest youth development organization in North Carolina and the largest in the nation with over 6 million participants. And whereas 4-H in North Carolina claims 260,000 youth members and 13,000 volunteers. While Bladen County 4-H program numbers are more than 74 members and more than seven volunteers. And whereas 4-H as a part of the NC Cooperative Extension System of NC State University and NC at and Youth State University is a program where youth learn through opportunities that provide them hands-on experiences in 4-H's mission mandates of science, engineering, and technology, healthy living, and citizenship. And whereas 4-H has connected youth and their communities with the innovative research and resources from our nation's 112 land-grant universities and colleges for more than 118 years. Now, therefore, the Bladen County Board of Commissioners does hereby proclaim October 3rd through 9th, 2021, as National 4-H Week in Bladen County. The board urges the citizens of Bladen County to take advantage of the opportunity to become more aware of this special program that enhances young people's interests in their futures as part of Bladen County 4-H youth development and to recognize the unique partnership between our county and our state university system. So on behalf of the Bladen County Board of Commissioners, I want to thank y'all young people for participating in 4-H and, and we do declare our 4-H week proclamation and just thank you and spread the word and maybe we can grow this organization. But thank you for what you do. Uh, we appreciate y'all uh, giving us support <laughs> and thank y'all very kindly. Thank you. Well, thank you. Now we move to item four, individual delegation wish to address the commission. No one signed in. Item five is matters of interest to commissioner. Anyone have anything? Mr. Chair. Just start right up here, Um, I just like to um I got a call and um an email for the citizens from Cobbers Creek uh, figure nine road. They want to thank Mr. Martin and those who assisted them. Their highway has been fixed, so um, especially Mr. Beatty and Mr. Jones, because his father's right there on that end. So they'd like to thank you guys for support and getting that road um, open. Good. Thank you. Anyone else? <clears throat> Item six, health department, Dr. Terry Duncan, director. So tonight we have uh, a much better report than we had a month ago this time. Mm -hmm. We are going to talk a little bit about where we are and in North Carolina today, um, there were 1,410,902 cases. A month ago today, there were 1,237,000 cases. Deaths today in North Carolina were 16,719 as compared to 14,708 a month ago. Today in North Carolina, there were 2,690 hospitalized as compared to 3,800 a month ago. So that, that was one of the metrics that was really, really concerning there. 
In Bladen County today, we had 92 deaths as compared to 78 a month ago. We had 19 deaths in September alone, giving us 26% of our deaths in September. From August, the, from June the 30th through September the 30th, we had 46 deaths for exactly 50% in the last quarter of our deaths. Or 50% of our overall deaths were in our last quarter. A month ago, we had 16 hospitalized in Lane County. Today, we have seven. We do have some very sick folks still in the hospital, but uh, some of them have made some great progress here in the last two or three days. So today in um, Lane County, we had 5,319 positive cases with 117 active as compared to a month ago, 4,812 with 3,351 active. So we've got about three times less active cases today. Positivity a month ago in Wayne County, we were at 15.7% and today we're at 7.6%. So a little bit more than twice less what we were. The state is at 8.4% today. So we are we are definitely moving in the right direction. The forecast for the next four weeks continues to look good and that we will continue to decrease. Um, we are holding our own and we have a lot to be thankful for in Bladen County. As far as the demographics, they really haven't changed much. Um, except in the 0 to 17 age group, as of right now, 15.5% of the cases are in or have been in that age group. And prior to the last month or so, we were running at the 11 to 12%. So we can see that is the age group that increased significantly. In the African American population, we currently have about 22% of the cases um, overall, with the Caucasian population at about 48% and the Hispanic population at 12%. So for population, <coughs> it remains the Hispanic population in Blaine County is the one that's being hit the hardest. Um, again, trying to make every effort that we can to get out in the community. Um, to date, we have delivered more than 12,000 doses of vaccine at the health department alone. And over um, 15,000 doses have been given at least a second dose for residents of Bladen County. We stand today in Bladen County at a 49% first dose and a 44% second dose. We are um, currently giving the first, second, and third doses. So you know the third doses of Pfizer and Moderna for immunocompromised. We've been doing that for several weeks. We are also giving the booster dose for Pfizer. And, um, and we do have open slots available. We're trying to make that public. You can go anywhere to get your booster dose of five. And, and we do have an ample supply. We are um, preparing for the um, anticipated booster dose of Moderna and the booster dose of Pfizer for children age five to 11. We've already started looking at logistically how we can assure that we are giving the appropriate dosage and trying to separate it out so that we don't give an adult dose to a child and, and vice versa um, to make it safe. We received um, approval or the CDC approved approval for that booster dose on Friday 9-24-21. The health department received the Sandy orders and they were reviewed on 9-27 with our first booster doses in the arm on 9-28. We knew we could safely do so. On 9-27, the CDC has issued a pregnancy-related COVID illness alert. As of 9-27, 125,000 confirmed cases in pregnant women um, had, had been reported with 122,000 hospitalizations and 161 deaths. In August alone, there were 22 deaths of pregnant women with COVID and 90% of the hospitalized were unvaccinated. We continue to test at the health department Monday through Friday. We are looking now, um, have 
worked with OptumServe. They're looking for a pod so that we could provide testing on Saturday and Sunday. It's difficult to find the testing place in Blaine County on Saturday, Sunday. So um, hopefully we'll have that in the next few weeks. You may have heard that because there were so many um, appointments with COVID and other illnesses that um, people couldn't get in to get their child health physicals and their immunizations. So the state, issued, the governor issued an executive order and Mandy Cohen issued an order as well that to delay those child immunizations and testing, we have had an increase in client visits um, on that day that it was supposed to end and since then, because as you know, with enhanced role nurses and our providers, the health department can provide those child health physicals and immunizations. So we've done some extra marketing in the last week to let people know we have that available. And then our flu um, vaccination has already started. We did receive a decreased allotment this year, but we've um, understood that in the next two weeks, which we should be receiving a bigger allotment. Any questions? Um, obviously, we're seeing a lot going on in our nation with folks coming across the border. Um, the high rate of positivity. Last year, it seemed like when we had an influx of the migrant workers and things like that, unfortunately, that's when our numbers skyrocketed too. Are we doing anything or do we have any way to possibly prevent that from happening again? We did this year when the vaccination was available. We worked with our migrant farm workers and folks coming in. We actually had hubs in the state where they could get the vaccination out of hub. And if they didn't come through the hub, if you can remember, we went, we went out to the farms and work with UNCP, they help to see. We're, we're ready to go anywhere that they are. We have some resources with the most folks that can help us get there. There's a fall, there's another big group come through. Yeah. Well, um, the booster shot that you have, you have you have three, you say? <clears throat> the booster right now that's available and approved by the CDC and the FDA is for Pfizer. Right, right. And those are for anybody age 12 and above that's been at least six months from their second dose. So 12, okay, 12. The third dose for immunocompromised that's been approved by the CDC and the FDA are both Pfizer and Moderna. But the criteria is there that you are immunocompromised. And it is by self attest. Oh, Dr. Duncan, I think the hospital's given the shot 10 to 2 on Friday. That's all something they've given. That's, the schedule. that's correct. We're giving it Monday through Friday. No, I just added that. Yeah. If that was 10 to 2, it won't be the flood hospital. It's only on Fridays. Dr. Duncan, I've had, <coughs> odd as it may be, two requests today, and it's the first I've had, period. Of why are we not offered a Johnson and Johnson? They said they were told because of the money that was involved. I'm like, I don't think, you know, they said this is one. No, sir. Um, the Johnson & Johnson at the time, we, we, we did consider Johnson & Johnson. At the time, they had had some adverse effects, and based on the population response at the time, for over two weeks, we only had six people that requested Johnson & Johnson. Right. So at that be, point, we have determined this that. This could have been two and six. Yeah. I didn't think that sound quite right. Uh, anything else? Another good week, Dr. Duncan. Thank you, ma'am. <coughs> Item 7, Park and Recreation. Frank <coughs> the Director. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I come tonight, I have two items. The uh, first item, I'll give you the uh, idea we've we've been running a concession stand operator position for the last two months um i don't know what's going on in our county but nobody wants to work. Um, we've had for two months we had three applicants the three applicants we hired one um the other person we've contacted numerous times by email and phone and we have not heard back from that individual the third applicant is a family member and the Blayton County employee policy under conditions of employment 14-2. Um, it addresses the immediate family member. Um, 
And in 14.4, it also says that the county commissioners can approve this. So I'm asking, because right now our program, we're running two concession stands and we'll have three to 400 people at the county park Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. So we're in a bind and we need, we need some help. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Question. Motion bonus. Any discussion? Yeah. Can you tell me what position? Oh. It's a concession stand operator. And these are the concessions. Go ahead. It's a concession stand operator. They work after five. On these, um, the ones that you that apply, do they work anywhere else in the county? They don't work now in the county, do they? The current the, the current applicants that we had they they do not they are high school age our existing employees that we already have they already have jobs till five o'clock so that's where we get in a bind trying to schedule some folks can't work certain nights so the more we have the more we can put in different spots okay all right thank you how old is sixteen any other questions? Mr. Peterson. Yes. Mr. Lance. Yes. Mr. Brett. Yes. Mr. Cogdale. Yes. Dr. Ellis. Yes. Mr. McGill. Yes. Dr. Mongolan. Yes. Mr. Bullock. Yes. Mr. Hester. Yes. Okay. I don't Mr. Brant. Uh, last last budget year we we had stage stage group the stage stage design they went out to the county park to look at our parking nightmare at the football soccer complex and I think there's a document that y'all received yes sir um we're asking the I don't know if you're aware if you've ever been out to the county park on a soccer football night. Oh, yeah. 701 is almost in a roadblock when it's coming by the county park. Um, by doing by this project, we will be able to do. We will be able to create so many more opportunities for the Bladen County Park. And I've listed a couple of bullets there with uh, the soccer football. It would connect our ADA. It would create more ADA parking for us because we have a lot of uh, ADA citizens in using the park and watching their kids or grandkids play sports. Um, we will be able to host tournaments whether it be softball, soccer, whatever it may be. And uh, we're getting more and more requests from the school system, whether it be public, private, charter. Uh, they're using the facilities for their home games. So uh, used to, I can remember three or four years ago, we would have rain, rain outs and it wouldn't be nothing to do with the field, it'd be because of the parking lot. This, uh, this project would help us in the future of the recreation department. So I ask you to consider that and maybe let me know your thoughts. Well, this item is, is not an action item, but it is up for discussion. If anybody's got any questions or any real concerns about it. The only question I have, what, what's the overall cost? $295,000. 200, 200 and how much? Five? 95. And that includes? That medium as well as that the parking and paving? The only thing it does not include is the landscaping. We would be responsible for the uh, flowers and stuff like this. Now, now, the parking lot you mentioned, that that would be paved or what? Yes, sir. It would be all paved asphalt. We would relocate our basketball court and make it more inviting and enticing. Where it's at now, it's in a in a tough location. We I know doing soccer games and football, I think that parking lot is just basically water. They're out there right now. 
I can promise you somebody's up sick and somebody's blocked somebody. Mr. Britt, I live not too far from this part. It's always exciting. I can sit on my deck and just about call the plays. You can hear it so, so well. But you know, from the industrial side of our county, of uh, people locating here with plants and organizations and business, this is one of the three things that they always ask us about. It's the recreation for the kids and school and adults. And, um, and I think any time that we can do something like this, regardless of where it's at in our county, and it doesn't entail raising taxes that we can work it out with the money that we have, I'm a supportive person. Anything that can improve our county to entice people to come, work, live, and want to stay. And I think this is a great asset to it, and I encourage other commissioners to consider that. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Bolt. I just got one question. Does this fit into our budget okay? Well, <clears throat> it would have, that's a good question. I wanted to mention this. Um, I want to remind the board members that $100,000 was appropriated to pay a Robert Moore drive and then to do some gravel work or whatever to address the, the holding the water in the parking lot. This would be so far superior to that. Um, as you all know, we're doing extensive paving projects in the county in this budget year, and that hopefully will begin soon. Our hope is that the board would favorably consider this, and we'd be able to include that when Kit does the RFP for the, for the pavement work, and hopefully we'll be able to obtain scale so that it won't actually cost in the high twos and lower. So. Love it. I think it's way over. Uh, maybe my grandkids, I'll get to go watch them in park. But um, two questions, one for you and one for Greg. Um, obviously, you know, it's a lot of parking spaces. Is this sufficient with this and what's on the other side for if you had, you know, the biggest event you can imagine? I mean, you feel like you're good with this? This this will accommodate the, on Doug Evans Road, I think there's maybe 90 spaces over there. This is 189. So it, it definitely, and it ties back into that walking trail. So it does help us with our pro, other yeah. program. That's what kind of, you know, talking about the money, I know we've got some money appropriated for infrastructure, for healthy living and healthy lifestyle. Is there money that we can tap into for that? Since this is a place where people can park and then be able to do the walking trails. And <coughs> Mr. Chair, oh, I'm waiting. Okay. One side, please. One, one thought I have is, as you all know, we just uh, board approved the finance, hopefully it'll be approved, finance uh, a couple of the purchase of several vehicles that we had originally didn't pay cash. That frees up money that would then be able to be applied toward this project without increasing the total budget. I'm just thinking more like the ARP, those sort of funds. If, that, if that's possible, we're exploring all options oh, for you. That seems like a no-brainer. It gets people outside, it gets some exercise, and gets them doing things that are going to help. Dr. Um, Mr. Grant. Is it any opportunity if you requested the funds? I talked to you about some support that East Arcadia Park needed. Now I know you, we, I support you doing anything for our children for a healthy living. At the same time, um, East Arcadia still needs some additional funds. So can that be included at the same time? I meant your. I, my budget comes from. The commissioners in Bladen County government, I, I don't have any funds in my budget other than the craft grant that I can allot outside my the partner I feel I'm going to that that will have to be a different request. We're we're talking about this paving this park or not at the county park and there's no extra dollars that go anywhere, but that would be up uh, to you to address well, sometime. It's paving as well. It's paving. And our park. And I mean, if we can find some dollars. Let me finish, please. Um, if we can find some dollars to this park, can we not find some dollars for the park in East Arcadia? What about the park in Tar Heel and Blainburg and Allen? Exactly. exactly. They pay taxes too. <laughs> so, um, I Do I need to? Mr. Speak? Pay. Yes, ma'am, it's not all part of this proposal. If you'd like to do something different, if you want that to be part of this proposal. 
Well, I was just asking Mr. Brandon, he can add it to that proposal. We, it would be hard for me to just, I don't, we're not responsible, and I don't say this, it may sound like, we don't upkeep the park in East Arcadia. I'm not, that's not in my realm of maintenance. And, and for me to make with, it would be a difficult one. I will help you in any way I can as far as applying for part of grant money or helping you any way anything that we can do for you we, we'd be glad to help I, I guess you're, you're missing I'm saying it's saying well then I'll ask the county commissioners then can we consider at the same time to do the pavement for East Arcadia at the same time if you have the contract with someone else and add that part add that additional cost what I'm asking I would say no Mr. Brent Dr. Mongolian, on the 30,000 two years ago that I brought and we to the board and we got it approved, what has been done with that money at this point? $25,000 and we did the fencing and working on the lighting for it. Okay. And Mr. Grant, Mr. Martin should be able to tell you they should have gotten the receipts showing that that was money was spent. No, I'm just asking. I'm not questioning. I'm just glad to know oh, that it was done. Oh, of course. Of course. And it was only 25. Mm -hmm. We didn't get to 30. Somebody else got 30. I think Blamber. Oh, oh, oh. Or 422. Again, is that money, that, that ARP money, which a lot of infrastructure terminology and that. I don't know if this would qualify as infrastructure, but it's certainly the healthy living and things of that nature. I just like I'd like I, I think <clears throat> I think that piggybacking this is my personal opinion. I first I respect you know Dr. Mungoins your your thoughts about your local park, but I think Grant was here to kind of talk about the overall county park that, which is our main county park, and I think trying to piggyback other parks like like uh, Charles Ray said, all of a sudden we're going to be looking at every park in the county would want the same. How about us paving? How about us? But you know, I think I think in all due fairness, it you know, it ought to be brought up as a separate item and not trying to piggyback what he's trying to come to the table with tonight. But that's just my and then you know, it's everybody's county. That's probably right. it's it's, it's, a, it's a, this is kind of like most counties, this is the county park, in other words. Uh, but that's just my uh, Dr. Thibon, I don't think there's any interest in piggybacking on this project right now. And I'll and I'll be okay. Then I just I'll come back to the um, county commission sometime. I'll get Mr. Pate and see if we can get some funds to pave the um, park here. Thank you. Sure. I've got one question. You know, we just recently had the state tournament here in Elizabethtown. You're talking at this. How would it compare to what we've seen there? A whole lot better. And that was a whole lot better. That's no problem. And after that, that was the other thing. Is it? it would give Bladen County a, a large space to have a bin. Like, you know, the relay for life. Oh, yeah. This would be, give us more opportunity to host. And, and the uh, tournament they have for the, for the handicapped kids. You know that? Uh, the special. Uh, special yeah. That was, this, this, would have caught, this would help. All right. I think of what it was. Is there anything being done? Uh, somebody mentioned about the traffic. Is the DOT involved in a, a better turning lane or a better way to get people in here? We have a turning lane already. Right. Used to in the past, people would park on 701, especially like eight mm -hmm. semi trucks, and that they would just park right on the shoulder of the road. So just help get people on. Just in get some in and out. Uh, Miss Pays. Oh, yes, I was, I was, I was thinking about when we talked at one time before about the county park parking out there. We had considered the fact that you go to a lot of county parks, they charge literally a parking fee because somebody got to keep that place out there. And have we looked at what what that type of cost is going to involve? Have we are we going to look at that cost during this time or wait till that comes up later? to maintain that facility because you're gonna have to have maintenance on that thing out there 
And a lot of county parks, you you literally pay to go in them. You gonna park free. We'll we'll talk about that at a later date. Is there lighting? Yeah, we would the lighting. We already we have we have existing lighting where we have now what we already have done. I think last year, year before, we would have to add some lights going down behind the bus garage, but that's not by its like. So, Mr. Pate, what I was going to suggest, I would suggest that you don't put all those bushes and stuff there, that you put those, if you put those crepe myrtles, it's fine, and uh, big, large shade trees are probably fine, but if you be back away from your parking lot, those crepe myrtles will take your parking spaces if you're not careful. <clears throat> and where you've got green spots in there, I would asphalt that. I would not have no grass in the middle because it's going to be hard to maintain and grow, stuff like that. You'd be better off to asphalt that whole thing and maybe add a few more parking spaces Make this thing user friendly so it's not a, a nightmare and grass growing on the asphalt and through the asphalt and all that stuff. And make sure that the shade trees and the crack marls are back enough so they're not going to interfere with your bark. Other than that, I'm good. Is that, is that code? I mean, I know like what we just did, you had to have so many bushes and so many things. You can do what you want to out there. Gotcha. Look, Mark, how, how is the county revenue from the uh, concession stand and so forth? How is that? Is that pretty good? Mr. Bacon answered that better. Revenue that's coming right in. now. I think I asked that question today before a coordinator went out to work. Our last soccer game, I think, we made close to five hundred dollars that on one night, and that's usually what we bring in on that. Nick, I don't. That's what we turn in now. We oh, that's gross then. Okay. And now, there's sometimes there's a group out there that sells um, ice flavored refreshments. Is that county or is that yeah, percentage of that? We have to send it off right. We approve that every year. Okay. Okay, we're we'll good. Thank you, Mr. Martin. Thank, Thank you so much. It was good. Um, Thank you. Item 8 is the advisor board for October 18th. Um, one of them is the training has increased on. The, the uh, adult care home community. Yeah, that adult care body needs to look at that. Marie's going to know and that. The, on the, and the nursing. And the nursing. We need to look at those two because they, they strain and the training hours has increased. So we need to look at those two and find out who's really willing to do that. And then November 15th, the uh, Bay Tree uh, Advisor Board. And it's time I'm trying to Mr. Greg Martin, County Manager. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to review the calendar with you. Coming out this Thursday, the 7th at 12 noon, the JCPC meeting will take place at the Ag Center. On Saturday, the 9th, 9 until 3, the North Carolina Great Festival will take place at Blue Mill Vineyard. That will continue to Sunday. The Clash of the Carolinas Triathlon will take place at White Lake. Ag Up -up Day events will take place at the County Schools, 11th, 12th, and 13th. Also on Monday the 11th at 5 p.m., the Health and Human Services Advisory Board meets, Health Department. On Sunday the 17th, the Great Escape Bike Tour will take place at Cape Fear Winery here in Pleasant Town. On Monday the 18th at 6.30 p.m., the board meets here. On Tuesday the 19th, we have a couple of uh, events taking place at 6 p.m. There's a strategic plan virtual citizen cafe that, that will be held. Um, also that evening at 6.30 p.m., the Blake County Substance Use Disorder Task Force meet at the college auditorium. On Tuesday the 26th, there will be a strategic plan citizen cafe at the uh, in the auditorium. At the and then the Flavor Beef Fest will take place on Friday and Saturday the 29th of August. Moving over to November, on Monday the 1st at 8 a.m., there's a prayer service here in the board meets that evening at 6.30. On Thursday the 4th at 12 noon, the JCCC meeting will take place. Friday the 5th, the Sunset Jams concert series featuring country grass will take place at the Cape Farmers Market. On Monday the 8th at, 8, at 5 p.m., the Health Human Services Advisory Board meets. Thursday the 11th, Veterans Day holiday will take place, and offices, county offices will be closed in observance of that holiday. Board meets on Monday the 15th at 6.30, Tuesday the 16th at 6.30 to complain substance use disorder task force meets. Thursday the 25th and 
26, county offices will be closed in the service of the Thanksgiving holiday. At 5 p.m. on the 26th, the Christmas tree lighting will take place and, and the kickoff for a warm Southern Christmas will take place here in town. Um, and then the Christmas in the small town weekend will be held that week through Sunday. And then on Monday, the 29th at 3 p.m. Uh, not sure about that. Maybe mm -hmm. that's on Saturday. Somehow or another, maybe out. Oh, the Christmas parade. Oh, it's Sunday. Yeah. It's Sunday, the, the 28th. Yeah. Um, any any questions or other things we need to include? Is there any adventure based on a bright screen zone? Anybody know we can go up? Okay, Mike. Well, yeah, I'm talking about we use that one here. If we do, we'll start. I was going to ask you. No, sir. I'm not. I'm not. We need to do something. Amen. I agree. Okay. 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 Okay.
Okay, I'll check on that. Mr. Bullock, Mr. Bullock, uh, Mr. Martin, what's the status of the work group? How are they doing coming along? You know, the work group we got? Um, my understanding is they're they're doing their having their meetings and moving forward. So the attendance is pretty good. I, I don't. I'm not personally involved in that. I, the comments I've heard back have been positive. I know several of the folks here in attendance have been involved directly. But I've, I've heard positive feedback. I don't know real specifics. So uh, I think some of the original people didn't show up, and those groups have added people. Okay. So they're, they've added people that want to participate. I think they're going well. I mean, I've heard from like three or four that they're going well. We have a check-in call, um, Dr. Duncan and Ty Shell, several of us with the county, every other Thursday. Mm -hmm. And feedback we've received is okay. in addition to the personal feedback I've heard. One other thing, Mr. Chairman, uh, the visitor we have is my daughter. Y'all don't know, so y'all be nice to me because she'll take care of you. You should have told us that a while ago. Why are you waiting for the meetings over there? <laughs> Mr. Goddell. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. 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 Pisa, I was, I'm looking at something that's happening that we are doing a little bit different or unique this time with funding sources and reallocations of funding that we haven't done in the past, like using different revenue sources and different funding mechanisms. Would it be okay for Mr. Martin to take an overview with what's happening with the parks situation yeah. to give us a complete overview of what we're shifting in the budget process to realign funds and where are the funds coming from and how we're shifting and what it looks like from what we passed in the current budget? Just an overview. If he could give us an overview on some of the things that is happening, because I want to make sure that when we appropriate money, we know where it's been appropriated from, where effect is it coming from. And this is an overview. That's all I'm asking for. This is an overview. If he could give us that, would that be all right with you, Mr. Martin? Mark, do you have it? Yes, sir. I'll be glad. I mean, I can tell you. Do you have any specifics you're talking about? I, I don't know where no, you're just talking like, about. Just, just like we're using the the reallocation of the funds is going to the police cars. Mm -hmm. We're trying to find the resources to deal with this park and other funds that we're using. This should give us an oversight if we're using different concepts to, you know, lay out how we handle finances. Because the last two meetings we're coming in, like really doing some adjustments to what we did with the current budget. And I just want to make sure we stay in the line of where the money's coming from. Mm -hmm. okay. I'd be Do everybody next to me or yes? I'm next to me. No, I mean, like the cars, he just shifted in the way he's going to finance them and the right. money go to fund balance. I'd like to see it in writing. If we say all I want to do is just, just give an overview. I'm not asking for nothing complicated, but just bring us up to speed. That's all. He'll get it. Mr. Martin, do it. Have a next meeting. All right. Sounds okay. good. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Sam Mr. Martin. I'll try spending dollars. All right. Uh, just real quick update on the Kelly Dyer. We got all our information to the Corps of Engineers, and Walter said he hopes Walter Haven, which is over the Corps of Engineers, which is looking at the Kelly Dyer so, survey and stuff that we did. He's hoping to have that by the end of October. Well, uh, he kind of insinuated. Right, Gary? We're hoping. Yeah, well, that's the start of a new fiscal year. Yeah, so uh, after October 1st, he can be able to. Uh, we we uh just to the Kelly people we haven't forgot about it. We're working on it. it we just it's just a long drawn out process. Oh, good, Jared. Thank you. Mr. Moran. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 Mr. Bullock? Yes. Mr. Hester? Yes. Uh, oh, you turned off. <laughs>